So I decided to start today with something easy. So I ran an electrical cable from my house and I hooked it up behind the camper and then I tried the lights and I got nothing. So I figured, well, maybe something's up and I need to switch a switch in the house. So I went up the stairs and tried and nothing. And so I, uh, I hooked up something else and power cord works fine. So I hooked it back up to the camper, changed out the light bulb in the kitchen, and then proceeded to look all over this camper for electrical outlets and I was unsuccessful until I noticed there was one on the kitchen light that goes over the, the sink. So I plugged in a cell phone charger to that because I figured that's the easiest thing to charge to plug in. So I plugged in the cell phone charger, nothing. So I'm not sure what's going on and this is just the start of my day today. And so I decided that, see this light right behind me? I decided, well, I'll change out the bulb in that to see if maybe it's just the kitchen light that's not working. So when I attempted that, let me show you. When I attempted that, I tried lifting this out. Of course, this won't come out unless the bulb's out. Not a problem, right? So I reached into the bulb and it's a tight squeeze and that thing is not budging at all. So I thought maybe I would pick this up and try to turn it that way. It's still not going anywhere. So I'm thinking maybe I will pull that whole fixture out and put a new, a new fixture in there that is going to incorporate power as well as the light. And I might be doing some wiring in here to number one, fix whatever's going on. And number two, I need more outlets than just that one over the sink because I really want to have a refrigerator hooked up in here. So I need an outlet that's dedicated to that plus one that I can use for appliances and something that I can use for charging computer and lap and, uh, and cell phone. So I guess I'm going to have to do some research, figure out where all the wires are and figure out how to wire this thing and I might even have to update the circuit breaker because I only have one circuit breaker in that box in there. So I'm going to have to do some research on that. Next project. So this is where the city water is and obviously there is some pretty significant rot there. So I am replacing this thing. You just saw me take the screws out. Now I have to cut away at this seal over here and then uh, I'm gonna loosen all of the, the hose inside so I just have that one section and then hopefully it'll just come right out. Let's see if that's what happens. In order to get a tight seal later, it's important to get rid of all of this residual goo, which offered a great seal for it, but obviously that wasn't the proper thing to be putting in there, so it didn't work. But I am going to get all of this off, and uh, I have a new city water valve that's the proper one. And that's what we'll be getting installed in here instead of this. So I'm going to work on this some more and then uh, we'll go deal with the, the hose inside. All right. All right, so you'll have to ignore the loud lawnmower noise from next door because my neighbor decided that now is the time that they wanted to mow the lawn even though it's autumn but maybe this will be their last lawn mowing of the year anyway so now I am unhooking this section of pipe from the city water so that I can have this replaced and 
this just came out exceptionally easy. I hope that is a, uh, a sign of the rest of my day because that would be wonderful if everything else goes easy today. So let's pull this out from the other side. That was so easy, it's scary, isn't it? So if all went well, the city water line should come right out, which I have no doubt that it will. And look at that. I am one step closer. So now I just need to have this replaced and then we can move on to the next step of replacing it. So I was taking the lights out of the cabinet after I did the pipe and I noticed that there were some wires hanging down. So I looked closer at them and they are in fact the wires that go to the light in the kitchen. So I ran, I ran my fingers down them and checked them out and I found where they are spliced into other wires and look at what I found. So this is the connection and the other connection is down there and what I'm thinking is that maybe these connections are just bad and uh, so I might shore those up and see if maybe I can accomplish something based on just changing those out and then it will be a an easier fix to do the rest of it. So we'll see. So I'm going to check the connection over here and see how it looks. So, I have just taken off the plate bracket from the back of the camper, and if you can see right here, this is where it was, and they were a little hard to get out, but it was only two screws, and those are the screws that inside got some duct tape on. So I'm gonna be able to seal up these holes, and in the spring, I'm going to find a better solution with better screws, and I'm gonna seal it up really good so that I don't have that issue on the inside. But while I was here, I happened to notice, see this seal on the side of the camper? If you look as I follow it down, you will notice, look at how bad that seal is right here. You see all this? This, my friends, is what is causing that leak inside. I don't know how long it's been like that, but we are going to have to shore this up. So this might be my next task. I'm going to shore this up and seal it and make sure that it is watertight before I bother fixing the inside. So that's what I'm going to work on right now. All right, now it's time to get a better look at that from the inside. We'll see what it will see. take this drip rail off so that I can figure out what it looks like underneath there. So that's what I'm doing now. Hopefully it comes off easy enough and hopefully the wood is not totally destroyed underneath it.
actually something good. All the wood here looks fine. All the wood around it, totally fine. That is a beautiful and very welcome sight right now. So maybe I will do something with this today. panel should be taken down also so let's do this right Since demolition seems to be the theme of the day, I figured I may as well tackle this cabinet door while I'm at it. I'm going to take the handle off first. I don't want to lose that handle, so I'm just going to peel this top layer off because I think that's the best way to do this. And I am just going to dispose of it with the rest of my demo that I have for today. And then I'm going to sand this down. And after that, I am going to treat it with some primer. You can't ask much of a 52-year-old cabinet, can you? Lived a long and happy life with this on it. It's time to break ties. So I just noticed when I was taking this off so that I could, uh, I'm going to take them off so that when I paint they're not in the way. But I noticed that on here, there is what looks like some sort of a chrome 
So I might just take, when I have all of these off anyway, I might just hit them with some paint remover and see if maybe there's a beautiful surface underneath because I'm not really a fan of the black handles anyway. So we'll see how that goes. So this is my roof fence and I can see exactly where the seals are bad. I can also see that there is a lot of crap up here that I need to dig through before I can take this off. So hopefully it's easy enough to get through it all and access these bolts so that I can get this thing loose. It seems like there's a crack that goes all the way around it. The product that I'm going to use for the new roof vent is called Butyl Tape and that's what people recommend you use for this sort of thing, but I imagine if they were sealing it up, maybe this is some sort of a tar product or something like that. Whatever it is, I'm just grateful it is coming loose relatively easily. The moment of truth is finally here. You want to see it? Look at this. Who said I couldn't take that out? It's left to clean all this. But oh my gosh. Look at that. I can see inside from outside. Now I just have to get rid of all this goopy stuff that is probably butyl tape.
then we'll be able to put on the new vent today. So, there's always something, right? This time, what I have for an issue is that a lot of these holes don't line up to the previous holes. So that means I am going to have to drill some holes, which I guess overall is not a big deal. But maybe this is not going to be completely done today now.